Hi everyone. Uh, questions have come up. Yeah. Hi everyone. I see if anyone's watching. <laughs> uh, Tony Davis here. I've been asked by Clive to uh, just have a chat, general chat about uh, the old days, really. Um, he asked me to start off with just a bit of my background and how I started in the fishing. So we'll start there. Um, my first recollection of uh, fishing is uh, going with my dad uh, on a crossbar of his bike. We used to go, I was only a toddler really, and uh, we used to go to the Lower Severn and catching a lot of bream and roach and stuff like that. Well, he did, not me. <laughs> um, I used to fish in the side, sat next to him and catch the old gudgeon or perch. Um, and then generally uh, just messing about fishing as kids and stuff like that. Um, then I started to take it a bit more serious when I got a bit of a teenager and I enjoyed a bit of fishing. Not much fishing, but uh, just enjoying me fishing in general. Um, and I didn't really get into match fishing till my early 20s. Um, just what I fancied doing. Um, that side of the sport really interested me. And uh, so we started off with uh, local clubs. Um, there's somebody hiding behind me. I don't know who it is. Mm. My daughter, I think. Um, um, started off with uh, local local clubs and uh, fishing the uh, local association matches as well, the team matches. And uh, we used to do okay. I, I, I've got to be honest, I can't remember the name of the first club I joined. Um, limited success. Um, then uh, I joined the uh, Gordon League Club. I was asked to join the Gordon League Club. We were the uh, top club around here in the day and still are. Um, uh, and uh, fished a few matches for them in their club matches. I used to do okay. And then um, had a go with the association matches with limited success, but I really enjoyed the competitive side of it. Um, um, and in those days, you used to have to uh, fish qualifiers to uh, try and get in the Gloucester national team. Um, which I did and managed to qualify. And I think my first national was on, I think it was on the Trent. Don't know which part it was, um, but the, the the middle sort of lower trend. Um, and uh, it was in the doldrums at the time, the same as a lot of rivers were. Um, and I caught, I remember we, they used to take you to your sections on a, in a coach. And I've never forgot this. I was sat next to this old boy and uh, talking to him and he was a local and uh, just had a chat with him, he, what he thought of it and he said, well, it's going to be hard, son, he said, but uh, you got any yellow maggots, he said, he said, just fish yellow maggot. So I had some, I did have some yellow and white maggots with me, so and that's what I did, just on a stick float, um, which in those days, uh, I actually sent for them from, I can't remember what the shot was, but it was Benny Asher stick floats. We're going back a long time now. Um, and I fished a stick float, loose feeding a few maggots, yellow maggot on the hook, and I caught two pounds something, that's all it was, dace and odd little roach. And believe it or not, I won the 80 odd peg section in my first national. Couldn't believe it, that's how bad it fished. Um, and then from then on, I fished uh, one or two more nationals, got into the Opens, fished a few more Opens. Um, and through the Gorham League Club, I got to know uh, my mate, uh, Max Winters, who was, uh, he was spreading his wings a lot further than me and um, doing very well on the Midland circuits and that. So I, I started traveling with Max, um, went to a few matches. I didn't use to fish them, I just used to walk the bank, just learn them really. Um, Max's taxi, I think they used to call me years ago. Uh, anyway, then I started fishing them in uh, 
and sort of shot of getting reasonable success and uh, just progressing there, really. Um, and uh, started winning matches of my own, and uh, it just took off from there. Used to fish Eversham a lot in the winter, really, not in the summer. Um, uh, Bristol Avon, Gloucester Canal in the summer, and general all over the place, really, we used to go in those days. It was all big matches, and it was it was great fishing. Um, a lot of travelling, but uh, I used to travel with Max, and um, slowly got more and more experience and did okay. Um, oh, I won some good matches in my time. I don't really want to bore you with all the details of uh, stuff like that. Uh, and then in the end, um, uh, I got asked uh, if I wanted to fish for Shakespeare. Uh, Clive was just setting up a, a, a sponsored team to Shakespeare Tackle. And uh, there were just six of us. I was gobsmacked really when I was asked um, but uh, that was great and I really started taking me fishing a bit more serious as well then um, and we had some great times in that team um, won quite a few events and uh, it was fantastic to be just involved with those kind of anglers you know and uh, anyway uh, Clive decided he wanted to make it into a, a 12 man team in the end which he did and uh, got to, to fish winter leagues, etc. Um, and uh, we got some uh, great anglers. Called. I can't remember all of them now, uh, but um, but over the years it was some good ones. And in the end, he brought in um, the three knots anglers: uh, Swino, Frank, and uh, Don Slaymaker. And um, that was. Uh, that just rejuvenated the team, really. I mean, these guys, you know, I mean, they were fantastic anglers, and uh, and the, the team went from strength to strength. Really, we did, you know, we used to win the winter league and stuff like that, and all sorts of events. Um, and then he just just took off from there, really. Uh, I don't really want to keep babbling on about me. Um, I've really come to. Uh, if there's any questions anybody want to ask, if there's anybody listening, that is. Um, uh, I can see there's 21 there. Yeah, that's quite good. I'm more than surprised. We thought with the first day back at fishing out of this uh, lockdown that um, everybody been out on the bank. Uh, I certainly will be myself tomorrow. Um, so really, I'd rather if anybody's got any questions at all, um, I'll answer those if I can. Yeah, I can't see any yet at the moment, but uh, we always used to, uh, I used to also travel with my great mate Tom Price, um, another Gloucester lad, um, and uh, we used to go to Ireland every year, fishing the uh, Classic, um, that was some great days over there, um, Fantastic. We used to go for two weeks sometimes, fish the Cliff Smart match after the uh, Classic, usually. Um, we had limited successes to start. At the start. I always remember the first time I ever went. Um, never had a clue what to expect. And I drew um, I drew pretty crap, to be honest, the first, first year. I don't know uh, how many of you um, have fished the Classic at all, but... Uh, there was a section called Queen Elizabeth Road, which, when the ropes run through, was absolutely solid. If they weren't there, um, you were in a bit of trouble. And uh, there, basically, it was it was wide at the either end, and you had a narrow sort of river bit run through the through the middle of it. And I drew right in the middle of that, and there was no fish there. Um, so I was very disappointed. The uh, I always remember the next. The next, we, that was the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, I went and drew a corner grade, which was another great section. Um, but I drew, unfortunately, I drew peg, about peg six or seven, which is just really, really deep and still. Um, and uh, I struggled there, the same as everyone around me did. But I caught, oh, I think I weighed 11 kilo, and I caught sort of, 10, 10 kilo of that in the last sort of 45 minutes 
um, fishing close in over grown bait, heavy grown bait. I mean, seven meter, and it was sort of, it was probably 16 foot deep. So it was almost like short lining. Um, and I caught those, and they were there, but it was too late then anyway. But, uh, but I never forgot that. And, uh, and it did uh, help me out in, in later years. Um, I mean, we fished there then, carried on fishing it for quite a few years, really, and great times we had. And then the one year, luckily for me, um, I drew, because you needed to draw some really good pegs to do any good in the festival. Um, and I drew the first day, I drew corner grade and um, peg 12, which is another deep peg, but it's nearer. I don't know the people who know it, but um, peg 12 is probably 15 foot deep, something like that. 13 is not much different and it suddenly jumps up to about seven foot on peg 14 and that and the, and the ropes were on it and um it was funny the day we arrived on the saturday uh i decided to, they had a match on and i decided to go and have a walk along the match and i went to corner grade and a, a guy i know a guy called phil mazzoni from Chartnam, he was on peg 12 and he was catching a few roach smallish roach and stuff overgrown bait. Um, and uh, the guy on 14, there was nobody on 13, the guy on 14 was bloody empty in it to hand. And like he said, he said, oh, that's been winning most of the matches here on this section. Hey, anyway, I drew peg 12 on the day, the first day. Decided to go for it. Uh, and uh, I fished probably eight, nine meters to hand. Um, and it was it was deep, but I I used some heavy, basically white brown bit of bit of brown chrome with it. Um, three red maggots on a ten hook, six gram float, um, and they were there. I was I just started catching. I mean, uh, the guy on thirteen was getting a few as well, but uh, the guy on fourteen was emptying it basically. But I was catching really well, and um, I thought I got a chance here. Uh, so they kept coming and probably the last two hours I suddenly caught a bream and I and the rope sort of went off and I thought hey I mean, there's some and I was fishing just off bottom uh, so I put another foot on went on the worm and I probably messed about for 20 minutes or so doing that and it didn't it didn't happen so I went back for the roach and uh, managed to catch some more roach Ended up with 30 odd kilo. Guy on 14, on 14, just beat me by two or three kilo. And I've always thought, if I had caught that bream and had stayed on the roach, I might have just picked him anyway. I finished second overall on the day, which was fantastic. Um, we moved on to the Wednesday, um, and I drew the air, what they call the airport, um, which is, if you draw the right bit on there, it's in those days, it was, full of bream um, and I got to meet Peg and I was more or less happy where I was just before the point um, just fished a simple feeder match caught 30 odd kilo again and uh, lo and behold I went and won the match I went round to in those days I used to take you to your pegs in in, um, in coaches as well and anyway, after the match I'll, me mate Tom um tom Prost, that is uh he drew a, an end peg um i can't remember what section it was I mean, on, on the monday um there was nothing on it anyway he's 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 come back and he's out 36 kilo and he's finished second in the match so we're stopping in the same shelly and um they were first and second in the match um previously when we were loading up on the coaches a guy who came with us keith pedley um he drew the peg that I had on the Monday and he didn't have a pole. So he called me off the coach. I should have said this before, really. Then asked, so I got all my kit back off the coach, got my pole out and the rigs and that, and gave it him. Um, basically said, look, it's already just set up. Fish it eight meters to under, whatever it was, and um, heavy growing bait and just see how you get on. Anyway, he, he ends up with 30 odd kilos. So we, in the chalet, there's four of us in the chalet. And we're first, second, and third in the match. It was unbelievable. Um, 
So that left me on about 77 kilos, something like that. Um, and I'm thinking, well, everybody said, oh, you've won it. You've won it now and this, that and the other. Anyway, uh, on the evening, we were having a drink as usual. And uh, quite a few people said, you do realize that no one's ever won it who was winning after two days. And, uh, and I thought, well, it probably ain't going to happen, but you never know. Anyway, on the third day, I drew, uh, I can't remember the name of the section, but it was a pretty crap section, to be honest. And, uh, and I drew right in the middle of it where you didn't want to be. You wanted to be the first couple of pegs, really, well, the last couple of pegs. And I decided, and as I was walking out the forum where we used to have the draw, bumped into Mark Downs, and he said, uh, where have you drawn, Tone? And I, I told him, and he said, he said, if you can catch 10 or 12 kilos today, he said, I reckon you'll, you'll win it. Anyway, I got to the peg and uh, looked at it, and it was uh, 50 yard wide, I suppose, something like 40, 40, 40, 45 yards wide. Hardly moving, just slowly moving through. And uh, and I thought, I'm just going to fish it English style, just fish it like, uh, as always, fishing the Gloucester Canal almost, uh, which is what I did. And I ended up catching, I think it was 11 kilo in total, as, uh, which was pretty good from where I was. You know, they really struggled from where I was. Anyway, when I got back, um, Tom had drawn quite well on, on another section. I can't remember what section it was. And uh, I knew he was, he was going to be my main, uh, competition for, for winning it. And, uh, I got back and, their coach hadn't got back then, and they were the last coach back in. And he'd come in, and he'd had, uh, I think he'd had another 30 odd kilo, which gave him, I think, about 75, 76 kilo total. So I'd, I'd won it, and Tom was second. Um, it was fantastic week. It was just unbelievable. I mean, I was really lucky. I drew, drew two real flyers in the week, and also where we've been going for a few years. You know, we knew roughly how to catch them and what methods on different things. So uh, it was a fantastic week. They also run a team of four during the festival. They probably still do. I haven't been for a long time. And we won that as well. We won just about everything, really. There was uh, me, Tom, um, Keith Pedley, and uh, old uh, Ron Prost from uh, Chucksbury. Great guy. Great guy. Um Called ourselves the Four Amigos, and we won the team match as well. It was a fantastic week. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's probably one of my better match wins. But um, over the years, we did we did do quite well. But anyway, if there's any, any questions now, um, uh, far away. I'll see you clothes on. Hi, mate. Paul Downs. Hope you're well, mate, and you. I'm sure you are. Uh, Clive, who was your hero in the day? Whew. That's a difficult one, that. Um, there were so many good anglers about then. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, it, it'd be easy for me to say someone I knew well, like Clive or Kenny or Max, which I'm not going to go there. I, I, who would it have been? Probably Kevin Asher. Um, he was... A standout angler to me um so laid back um then he could do it all you know so I probably probably was you know um uh yeah i'll go with kevin yeah clove here again what was your most memorable win i've just been talking about that <laughs> um the the most uh the best win in england which i really really meant a lot to me was the Avon Championships. I mean, it was a big match in those days, probably a 400 pegger. And uh, I remember um, about two weeks previous to the match, um, Johnny Sherwood, um, the late great um, broach angler on the Avon, fantastic guy and fantastic angler. Um, he used to run Saturday Opens and uh, I drew the peg three on Huxley's, which is the one running onto the railway bridge at the bottom end, for those who knows it. It's not in there. They don't use it anymore. But uh, I drew that peg, and I won the match with 30-odd pound of chub on the waggler. And uh, 
we were in the pub on a Friday night. It was a Saturday match. Um, and uh, talking away and uh, where do you want to draw and this, that and the other with the other Gloucester lads. Um, we all used to meet up on a Friday and have a few beers. And I I said, well, I'd love to draw peg three at Oxley's. I said, uh, I'd love to. I reckon I could win it from there. Anyway, we go to the draw. Then I drew Huxley's. They said, oh, you're down to Bonham End somewhere. And uh, I walked down there. And, I mean, you had peg nine and ten, which were good pegs. Peg three. And the rest of them, you weren't going to catch enough to win a match like that with all the good pegs that were in. Um, anyway, I couldn't believe when I got there. I actually drew peg three. And uh, anyway, I, I ended up with £25 of uh, chub. Started on a waggler, um, caught about probably £15 or more. And then it, it just went. Um, the peg just went. And uh, the feeder had come in then. That It's probably the second year of the feeder or whatever. You know, and uh, <coughs> I'd set a feeder up, chucked it over, and uh, and I had some more fish there. I probably caught £10 a feeder in the last hour and a half, something like that. And, and ended up winning a match, and that meant a lot to me. That was a great, uh, <coughs> a great win. Um, we throat's getting a little bit, you know, excuse me a bit. Uh, yes, well, that's probably my most memorable one. Yeah. Carl Taylor, hello, Tony. How are you, mate? All right. Paul Jackson. Yeah. Good, good lad. Who knows at Evesham? He does well at Evesham. Um, <coughs> what are you saying there? I've got to move this up a bit. I don't know how to do it. There we go. Um, plus, where do you think the best area to catch a bag of small fish? Well, I'm double tap here, you know what I do. Um, sorry? I don't know if anybody can still hear me. I'm having problems with uh, the pictures going off for some reason. <coughs> I will tap that. You know what I mean? Well, that's why I think I'll touch that by mistake. No, that's the end of it. Yeah, and I ended it. It's yeah. Well, I think we're coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm back on there, mate. Cheers. <coughs> Cheers. Uh, sorry about that. We got um, technical. Um, oh. <coughs> Mind, yeah. What do you want? Uh, just a cup of water or something. So just a. Uh... How am I doing, Ben? All right. I can do we're live again now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we had some uh, technical difficulties there. I don't know whether I touched the wrong button or whatever. I'm not very well up on this. My daughter just managed to get me back on. Um, Paul Jackson was the last question I've seen that uh, asked me about the canal where to catch some small roach and stuff, smaller fish. Um, really, uh, you can catch, if, if you fish for small fish, especially pleasure fishing on the pole, um, you, you'll catch them in most places. Uh, it's surprising um, what you will catch, Paul. Um, uh, where would I suggest? Really, uh, it wouldn't bother me where I went. Really, uh, I'd expect to catch like Sims or uh, Bree's quite good. Um, 
won seven tis it really uh, how you won seven tis a lot of there's a lot of breeding there but there's a lot of more skimmers in odd roach about um anywhere like that um i'd go but if you fish for small fish you'll catch them just you know a bit of ground bait and maggot and whatever um mark jones hello Tony. what's your favorite peg on the glossy canal Whew. favorite peg well you'd have to say one on the um, empty bend really wouldn't you um 47 48 somewhere like that um I well, we did draw it a couple of years ago, 48, on a small open and managed to win the match with not, not a big weight. It's, uh, it's uh, 17 or 18 pounds, I think it was. But uh, that's, that's the hot area. Um, around about peg 180, something like that. You know, uh, that's a, that's, there's always a few green around that area. Uh, 178 to 180. Um I've never been one for sort of going out to try and find real flyers on the canal. Um, uh, you know, I'd rather just fish on the main match length, really, and uh, and, and take it from there. Unfortunately, with this uh, lockdown we've had, um, there's been no matches on the canal this spring. <coughs> Normally, we have uh, the team's four spring lead, and that that's always a great league, 100 peggers, um, and a few opens in between. But unfortunately, uh, that's been off now. But uh, but never mind. Hopefully next year we'll be back on. Um, I hope that answers your question, really. But uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'll have a sip of water. Yeah, but I can't see the um, the thread for it. Um, I think someone mentioned earlier before that I lost it. Uh, had a nickname used to call me Colonel Beetroot. Um, well, basically, that was Frank Barlow um, years ago. Um, as you can probably see in the picture here, I've got quite a red complexion. And when I get it in the fresh air, especially if it's a bit windy, I mean, I, I go like a bloody beetroot. Um, it's always been a bit of, well, it's not embarrassed me, like, but people um, take the mickey a bit. And there was a, I can't think what the program on the telly was. Um, but there was a colonel beetroot in it, and he and it just stuck. And then the end, people just called me the colonel, and that was the, that was the uh, thing for that. I remember at the time, uh, Paul Newell was fishing with us, and uh, he used to get a bit of a red complexion too. Um, and uh, Frank started calling him um, Private Cherry. That was it. I don't know if I remember right, but he didn't like that at all. So uh, that, we knocked that on the head. He um, Took a, took a bit of offence about that. Great guy as he was, but he didn't like being called that. Um, but yeah, I'm still waiting for any more questions to come up, but I haven't seen any yet. Um, I'm frightened to touch any, then he goes, which I forget. Um, <coughs> I pressed the wrong uh, button the last time, I think. But um, I think there's a way of scrolling up, but I'm not sure how to do it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, um, another match, a memorable match I, I won many years ago was the, uh, the the sugar beet match on the north bank of the Neen. That was a cracking match. Um, we used to go up and didn't fish it very often the north bank because it was a fair way off, but uh, up in Peterborough. But uh, we all we all went up there and fished it, um, and uh, I, I just drew a number and. I remember I went with John Cassidine at the time, who was a regular expert up there, and um, had a word with him. And um, he said, uh, he said, oh, he said, it's not too bad, You're right up the far end, he said, but uh, there is a few bream in the area. So I got there, because basically I went out to fish for ropes, really, and eels on the Wagler. Um, anyway, I got there and looked at it, and, I, and it was bright, hot, sunny day no wind and definitely not a brain day but i thought well i've got to give myself a chance here so i'll fish it like gloucester canal it was very similar to the gloucester canal really a similar sort of width and depths and um so i just started on a ground bait feeder about three quarters of the way over which is sort of standard practice on the gloucester and um 
nothing for a bit, and I'm just starting to think of change, and the chip's gone round, nothing, a liner. The next thing, it, the peg come alive. Um, and I started catching these bream. I don't mean masses of them. The first one was a big one, probably four pounder. Then I had two or three more, and I um, can't remember how many I had in the end. But it was all hectic stuff. They were there. I was getting liners. I was like, yeah, no one, no one else around me went on the feeder. I went with me on that. Um, um, so obviously the few that was there were drawn into my bit of ground bait. Um, and uh, they, then it just after about three hours, it just died. But um, I had, I can't remember what weight I had even then. Then I fished for uh, on the Waggler or a pole, I can't remember which now, and caught some eels for back it up, uh, and ended up winning the match. I couldn't believe it. Um, so that was a great win. And um, like I said, if I hadn't have bumped into John and he'd have told me about these bream, I wouldn't wouldn't have even done that. So thanks, mate. I just appreciate that. Um, if you're little, you're probably not listening, but I hope you're keeping well as well. But um, you never know, we might bump into each other again one day. Um, uh, and see, Rollins, any tips for plumbing a depth to fish roughly on Gloucester Canal? Or what to look for? Well, everybody's not the same, but personally, um, the, the main uh, areas are sort of for roach. You want to, you're looking at sort of eight meter, not, you know, be anything between eight and ten foot, really. Um, you will catch them long, but uh, but the way the glossary is now, you, you basically got to fish for bream. So you're looking, um, I like to fish sort of towards the bottom of the far shelf, um, and then um, bottom of the far shelf, and uh, and then the sort of 11, 12, I don't, I don't like this 13 meter. I don't think you need to go that far on the Gloucester myself, but uh, a lot of people do. On the, That's on the pole, obviously. But I usually start off, I cast over, sort of halfway down. If you just tweak it along, you can fit, you can feel the feeder or well, when you're plumbing up with a bomb just a light bomb and you can feel it rolling down the shelf and then it all of a sudden it'll tighten up and you you, you found out where your bottom of your shelf is. So I usually fish sort of six foot past that and um, and then just fish that the bottom third of the shelf on the feeder. Um, sometimes you'll catch them over um, but you've always got that to if they back off up to there you've always got that to chase later in the match. Um, Different on the on the you know on the two mile bend if you draw on there, then it's basically um, a pole job. Uh, you can fish thirteen there if you want to, but always always set up a four or five meter pole there as well because it's just the same depth more or less four meter as it is at thirteen meter on that bend. So feed two lines there and then probably the middle to two thirds um, on the bend on the feeder and feel your way through really. Um, and that's what I do. Uh, but, uh, like I said, the bream, you want to be fishing a gram and a half, really. Gram and a half, if it's a bit windy, two gram. Um, it doesn't pour like it used to in the old days now, the, the canal. Um, and uh, I'm always one for fishing smaller shops too, uh, even for the bream. I don't ever seem to lose any. Uh, probably shouldn't have said that, but, uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, I used to look a bit of fish meal ground bait. Always, if you're fishing for a bream, I always put fish meal in. Um, they seem to, they love it. Um, uh, that's and that's what I do. So that's hopefully that answers that for you. Um, question from Paul: I make the favourite tatcher of Gloucester Canal, and where do you think the best area is to catch? It? I think I always emptied that. Emptied seems big bream or nothing. General thoughts: Yeah. Um, like I said, Paul, um, if you if you go to fish for smaller fish, I um, mean, don't feed it as so heavy as you would for bream. Don't use uh, fish meal. Um, uh, just use a normal ground bait, um, black roach, something like that. Um, whatever you whatever you've got confidence in, really. Um, but you want to put a bit of ground bait in. Loose feed over the top. Uh, like I said, you'll catch. 
more skimmers, more skimmers than in bream. The old bream will come in. Um, well, you know, because when you're pleasure fishing, you can catch fish in a lot of areas. It's surprising how many fish are in that canal. It's just under match conditions, it just goes uh, a bit sour, but uh, gets a bit harder then. But uh, but generally, I'm quite happy fishing almost anywhere on the canal for pleasure fishing. Uh, also, uh, you're talking about Hempstead, round about peg 10, 12 in the, what we used to call the old bay. Um, that's a good area for smaller fish and uh, always catch catch fish there. It's quite shallow as you go out and then it'll suddenly drop off. So you've got the option of fishing both. Hopefully that'll answer your question, mate. Um, who was in the original super, uh, Shakespeare super team? Well, I think I mentioned before, it was uh, Penny and Clive, of course, uh, Dave Williams and Steve Webb, and Max Winters and myself. Um, and it was an exciting journey, really. I think we were the first sort of properly sponsored team, um, you know, with proper sponsorship, I mean. Um, we had all our kit gave us, and, uh, and we paid a retainer as well, and it was a fantastic time, you know. It was, it was great memories I got from that. Um, but, yeah, that was the six of us. Um, I don't think Dave and Steve fish anymore. I haven't seen them for years and years. Um, Max doesn't fish anymore. Unfortunately, as you all know, Clive died at a very young age. Um, um, Kenny does a lot of uh, trout fishing now. He's into trout fishing. Um, he's still doing that big time. But uh, he gave up fishing. I think it's only me now who's doing a bit, really. Uh, I think Max had a play now and again, but not really on matches. Um, but yeah, um, back in the day, it was good. It was very good. Um, uh, I didn't say much else about that, really. Uh, it was just a fantastic period in my fishing life, really. Uh, in the Eversham days, I mean, uh, I mean, years ago, I used to get invited to the uh, English and Fine of the weekend. And that was a fan, and in those days, it was a fantastic weekend. It was a real family affair. Was, you know, them, the wife, Viv, used to come, and my daughter, Zoe, they were really into it. And all the other lads there, but we all used to get on. Most of them, you know, quite a few of them brought their wives and stuff like that. And we used to stay, I think it was the Royal Oak we used to stay in in those days. Uh, fantastic times we had there. I mean, how we ever fish the next morning sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it's cost me dear before now. But uh, when you're younger, you can shake it off in the mornings. And now I could never do it now. But uh, the old Evesham days, they were brilliant. I mean, Dick Derrinson started it all off. Um, God bless him. And uh, uh, they, they were just fantastic times, you know. Um, uh, later on, like Shakespeare took it over, didn't they, in the end? And uh, they sponsored it very well. Unfortunately, now, I know it's still being run. Um, they, I don't think they've got a sponsor. They might have a sponsor for this next year. I don't know. Um, but it all seems to be going commercial fishing-wise, doesn't it, now? And um, nothing against that. Um, that's the way fishing's evolved. I remember many years ago when these... Um, Commercial start first started appearing, and uh, Kenny Kenny Joe said to me then, and well, other people who asked, uh, he said, "That's it's going to be the future of match fishing." He said, "The way it's looking, I mean, the rivers were going through the doldrums at the time, and um, and he's proved right." Uh, but uh, I did a bit. Of, I've done a bit of commercial fishing, but I've got to be truthful. I've had a few results, but I've, <laughs> it's. Uh, I've never understood these bloody carp, um, you know, and um, like I said, I had a few results when I first started doing it, but uh, I wouldn't c uh, consider myself as a successful commercial angler by any means. Um, but uh, there you go. But I am looking forward, hopefully, um, uh, if we can get out of this uh, lockdown completely in sometime in the summer, hopefully uh, I'll be back at Eversham. Um I do enjoy the matches there. You can drive to your peg, which is important to me now. Um, I'm pretty fit, but the amount of kit we take with us now is ridiculous. 
And a place like Eversham, you need everything but the kitchen sink with you anyway to cover all all options. Uh, so it's nice to be able to pull up your peg and you've got it all there. Um, and you can uh, take it on from there. Um, but uh, other than that, really, um, in the winter, I don't fish at all. Um, I'm, I'm into shooting big time. And, uh, and through the shooting season, which is September to... Uh, the end of January, uh, February the 1st, actually. Um, I'm involved with shooting on, uh, help out on a couple of pheasant shoots and that. And, um, so that's what I do, which, uh, for an old bugger like me with the cold weather, it's, uh, probably the right thing to do. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't know the time we're doing. I'll have a look. We've been on for nearly 45 minutes. That's quite surprising. Um, yeah, I don't know whether there's any more questions going to be coming up. Um, I should be got, we've got a few watching, but, um, uh, but there's not many, uh, throwing your questions at me, which, uh, probably good for me, really. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, looking back on the old times and some of the people you met, um, there were some great guys, um, uh, about, you know, um, really nice people, um, so I'd never remember them all now, um, uh, but uh, I met some fantastic people during those times. Uh, uh, I remember um, years ago fishing the, uh, they used to fish the Greenway League on a Wednesday, that started up. And um, people from all around the, the first year, people from all over the country, well, they, they, they still do, it's not the Greenway League now, but... Um, they don't run that out of Wednesday League now, but uh, uh, it was a very well attended uh, thing, you know, uh, it was a fantastic place. And um, I was lucky enough, um, I was going to have won that league three years on the trot. Um, it just suited my style, really. You, were, you know, one one day it was perfect river, you go the next week and there'd be two foot on, and you're fishing in the bloody grass sometimes, trying to catch fish. And it's surprising where you could catch them too sometimes, but uh, it was a bit of a very kind venue to me. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, that's all in the past now. But I do enjoy going there now and uh, trying to qualify for the final still. Um, and I've been lucky enough to get through uh, the last few years to qualify. And my wife Viv and daughter Zoe, they love to come along and uh, and enjoy the fishing. Uh, I don't do very good there on the, I haven't really drawn very well on the finals and, or I don't think I have anyway. Um, uh, so I haven't had much success actually on the finals, but I've, you know, I've frightened the odd bloke now and again next to me when I'm fishing the qualifiers. I do enjoy fishing them and, uh, had a bit of success. Um, yeah, I mean, I had quite success years ago in, in the final. Um, uh, never ever won it. Um, I think I was runner up twice. Um, I think both times I might have been next to the winner actually. Um, and I, there was another time, a couple of times I could, could have won it. Um, you can make all the excuses in the world, but at the end of the day, I think if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. That's the way I look at it. Um, uh, I remember the one year I drew. Uh, what is now, well, I wasn't peg 24, peg 24 is the, the, the three below the bridge, um, which is the culvert peg, and then 25 below, and you've got some big willow trees in between, and, a, and another bit of an old culvert thing there, and I used to put a peg on that, and I drew that, the only trouble was in the summer, it was a bloody parrot cage, you, you had to stand down um, on this bit of concrete, and uh, your kit was behind you, up on the bank. And, uh, I mean, in those days, we used to have a bait apron anyway and a catapult and some bits and bobs in your apron. Um, and you could, I remember it now, you could only cast sort of underhand, um, just a sideways flick with a, uh, a waggle. You couldn't catch, or couldn't catch anything inside stick float fishing. And it was very tight peg, very tight peg. And, um, so I just fished a little waggler that day, and, um, and if I remember rightly, I think um, the peg above me was John Dean, 
and the peg below me was um his name will come to me now um I must apologize um the not fed lad um oh, his name he won the match actually um but uh he uh I mean, I couldn't see anybody. I was surrounded by these trees, so I just fished away. Um, and I remember right at the end, um, uh, there was a big cheer on the bank, and uh, Pete Palmer, that's who it was, Pete Palmer, fantastic angler, nice guy. And uh, he caught a big chub right at the death. And um, anyway, the scales come on. I think John Dean had six pound on. I think I weighed about 9.14, something like that. And Pete weighed, I think he weighed 11 pound odd, something like that, and won the match, and I ended up second. Um, but he had that show, but he was fishing for it. Good luck to him, you know, same as I was. But uh, um, but that was a great result. I enjoyed that. Um, the team boys, we, uh, we used, to be fair, we used to dominate that. Um, we won it for quite a few years. Um, <clears throat> I remember one year I used to do pretty good, but the one year I drew pretty poor and Troy's on it, I couldn't catch. You know, I think we finished runner up that year and my score, you know, let the side down a bit really, but I, I don't think I could have done any more. I, I did my best, um, which is all you can do. Um, but we had some great times on that on that river and on that weekend was fantastic. Um, still a fantastic weekend now, but uh, you know, the fishing's not the same and uh, you know, with no sponsorship or not so much sponsorship, uh, you know, everybody's chasing the money on the commercials now, as you know, uh, but uh, they were great times, great times. Uh, I've got some pops up on there. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is in front of me, but uh, I'm I'm not going to touch anything. <laughs> I'll probably turn it off again. But um, yeah, anyway, I think um, my hour is nearly up. Um, I'm not getting any more more questions in, so uh, I'll um, I think I'll sign off and um, say goodbye to you. And uh, thanks very much for listening. And uh, You've got loads more oh, questions. oh, hang on, there's more questions coming up now. My daughter just suddenly realised you've got to scroll through them. I'm, I'm clueless. You can probably see her in the corner of the screen. <laughs> so I'll, I'll answer a few more. Um, message from Carl Taylor. John sure with bloody hell, Tony. He stopped me having a perfect debit in match fishing. I ended up second to him by an ounce and a half. Well, John Sherwood was a um, bloody legend. Um, he was a lovely guy. He used to come with the matches on his motorbike believe it or not, but a fantastic stick float angler. Stick float angler. Um, if there was any roach about, the match was all over. He was fantastic. I used to fish right off the end of his rod and somehow he used to be able to charm these, he used to charm these roach into his net. He was a fantastic guy uh, and a fantastic angler. Um, uh, so there was no uh, shame in getting beat by, by John, I can assure you. He beat me you gave me a few uh, hammer ins next peg, I'm going to show you with that. Um, Josh Barlow, hello, hello to you, mate. Um, uh, Ray Baisley, hello, Ray, it's nice to see you. Um, hi, Tony, you enjoy fishing at Bristol? Oh, it's fantastic. Summer fishing. Um, uh, it was just fantastic. We used to love it. We used to run some good matches down there, the crane. The walks were horrendous, as you know. But um, the great fishing with the old top raskin float. Bit of wag there as well now and again. We used to catch a few. But um, yeah, we used to love those days. Um, had some nice matches on there. Um, speak to, oh, hopefully, I'll see you again right soon. All the best, mate. Paul Jackson. Biggest salmon, where? <laughs> well, I've, um, the last three years I joined a salmon syndicate, it was a, on my bucket list really, to try and catch a salmon on the fly. And I joined a syndicate called the Golden Mile. Um, it's uh, just below uh, Fornal. And uh, 
I managed to catch one um, towards the end of the season on the fly. Fantastic experience. Um, uh, so lovely there. I'm, I'm actually I'll talk to the gilly um, on there this morning because they just opened it where we can go fishing again. Uh, at the minute, the the, the waters, uh, same as all rivers, are really low, so it's not good conditions for salmon fishing anyway. But I will be having a day there next week. Um, but uh, I'll see you at Eversham soon, Paul. Anyway, all the best, mate. Uh, Lee McQuaid. Hi, Johnny. I know you to match fishing. What's the best bait to cut? Tension bream. <laughs> um, best bait. Um, what did, this, what did uh, Kenny always just say years and years ago when he was bagging up? Anybody asked him what he was getting them on? What well, I'm giving them, son, he said. What well, I'm giving them. <laughs> but uh, tension bream, really, if you had to pick one bait, you'd probably pick worms, really. Um, uh, obviously maggots, pellets, bread. But if I had to pick one bait, it would probably be chopped worm and a bit of ground bait. Um, it usually sorts a better fish out. Um, I hope that answers your question all right. Um, I don't know you've got to scroll up this thing, whether there's any more questions there. But we'll have a look in a minute. <laughs> no, it's not moving. Anyway, yeah, guys, we've had uh, we've had an hour, so um, I think uh, oh, there we go again. We found them again now. Um, very well, what I Tony, nice to hear from you, Craig Fletcher. Hi, mate. Last seen you on the canal in one of the in one of the spring matches. Hope you're keeping well. Tony James, yeah, <laughs> still over, and I am indeed, yeah. Um, it's just finished now, actually. The season's still on, but it's um, uh, it's basically finished. I've put all my stuff away, but um, I always enjoy the elder fishing. Just like fishing to me, and um, I'll always do it as long as I'm fit enough. Clive, you've had some good catches on the feeder over the last couple of years. Would you say it's your best method, or would you prefer the waggler or pole? I don't mind what the method is, really, uh, Clive. Um, you, you, you've got to use the method that's going to catch you the most fish. Um, I remember when the when the feeder first came in, um, it was really frowned on by a lot of anglers. Um, but it was winning matches. And uh, you either went with it or you might as well give up. You had to learn to do it. And um, once... Uh, you know, the good anglers, I'm not saying the other anglers who were doing it weren't good anglers, but the top anglers then were, got into feeder fishing. They were, you know, they were just tweaking it here and there. And and, and in the end, the, the, the better anglers were catching more fish on the feeder. So it's, to me, it's just another feeder. I mean, feeder fishing now as well has really took off, as you know. Um, they've got the world championships and there's so much more to it and, you know, the guys say it's chuck it in chance. It, um, it's uh, it's far from that. There's so much to it, and these top guys now um, are really good at it. I mean, but my feeder fishing are basically Gloucester Canal. Um, you've got a feeder fish. Um, um, if the feeder is in it, it wins. It's got to be at least ninety percent of the matches. I would say sometimes the pole wins. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's 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 basically a big bream venue, you know, Gloucester Canal. So you've got to be good on the pole. I mean, waggler fishing, waggler and stick was always uh, my strongest point here. Many when I was a young man fishing, uh, I used to love it. Um, and that was always my preferred methods. Of course, there was no pole in the early days. Um, I enjoy pole fishing a lot now. Um, and say, look, I said, any, any method, the method uh, that you need to use to to, to compete, then uh, you know you, you've got to use it. Simple as that. Um, where am I? See if I can. Uh, 
uh, Chloe Brown. Is your mate Bob still fishing? Uh, I don't know which Bob you're on about, mate. Um, um, if you could elaborate a bit on that. Um, Bob. Uh, I'm not sure, mate. I can't... Uh, I can't remember. I'm not sure what Bob you're on about. So, <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks, folks. I'm going to sign off now. It's um, it's uh, been lovely talking to you all, and uh, I'll see you all again uh, uh, in the near future, hopefully. So, bye now.